And so now I'm joined by Herbrand Smith. He's from NEFG. Thanks very much for joining us, Herbrand. My pleasure. Super. Now, the third quarter was the most negative in four years. Um, but I see that at the beginning of the fourth quarter, um, it seems to be a risk on mode. Why so? Yeah, look, I think we all just probably got tired of all the negativity out there. So a bit of better news from the PMI numbers from Chinese this morning, although still in contraction, I think it was a bit better than what the economists were expecting. Uh, we also know that um, they're changing some gears in China, uh, in China at the moment, so you're probably going to see less manufacturing but more consumption-driven uh, economy going forward. So. Um, we also know that they, they cut interest rates about five times this year, and people are hoping for this to be the bottom in the manufacturing index. So let's, let's see. There is some cheap sectors locally, but there's all very expensive sectors on the local front. Just to home in on China's PMI, it uh, registered um, a slightly higher number, 49.8 as opposed to 49.7, but it's still in negative territory. Despite the stimulus that you're talking about, it's not gaining any traction. Yeah, look, I'm not an expert on the economist front on, on what's putting it down at the moment, etc. But certainly they, they have gone through a very difficult patch over the last year or so. Um, and uh, this is not the only driver of the economy on the manufacturing side. We saw some U.S. stats over the last week out as well that they're actually in a contraction on the manufacturing side as well. And the job numbers are actually declining on the manufacturing front. So certainly difficult globally on the manufacturing front. Uh, but, yeah, as I said, um, I think a lot of bad news priced into some of these uh, Chinese stocks and some of the local uh, Chinese uh, stocks that do business with the Chinese at the moment. Whilst we're still talking about PMIs, we might as well talk, talk about the local PMI number. That also came in at around 49, slightly better than the previous month, but again, still in contraction territory. And despite the rand flirting with 14 against the dollar, we're just not making it. No, certainly, and I think people were hoping for a bit of a better number on that front. But yeah, we're struggling. Uh, we're not competitive on a global basis, um, and certainly there's a lot of headwinds in the South African economy at the moment. Now, one of the numbers that the market will be looking out for is tomorrow's uh, non-farm payrolls out of the U.S. That's expected to be quite a good number. But what does it mean? Does it mean that the Fed Reserve is going to hike rates? Yeah, look, it's, it's difficult because in the beginning we know that growth were one of the, the targets of, of the Federal Reserve and we know that the job numbers were one of those and both have been accomplished over the, over the past year or two. Uh, so certainly I think they gave us a hint that inflation needs to tick up a little bit and at the moment we're still not seeing any inflation. We said Europe inflation numbers out that was actually negative. Uh, US inflation is not there yet. So we certainly, uh, I think the Fed is going to have a closer look at inflation because there needs to be demand in the economy to actually start moving the interest rate. Whilst you're not an economist, you obviously look at macroeconomic indicators that help to influence how you trade and so on and so forth. Now, Christine Lagarde, the MD of IMF, she's warned that developing and emerging market countries are likely to drag down growth, global growth going, fur going further. So what does that do for somebody like you? How do you invest? What strategy do you need to employ now in a very uncertain world? Now look, we actually just don't look at the macro at all. So we do company valuations and asset class valuations, and, and we look specifically at those. So the macro change over time, and you'll never get those calls correct. Uh, but what it tells you is that we had six years of almost zero interest rates in the developed markets, and it's certainly scary to see that the growth is not coming through. So there's a lot more trouble than, than, than what the stock markets are predicting. And we've got stock market indexes at, at very high P multiples and valuation levels. Uh, and a few of the sectors are feeling that. And on the other hand, you had some sectors like uh, locally a resource sector that's been out of flavor for about five or seven years. Mm -hmm. And those are certainly attractive for us at the moment because they certainly beaten down uh, they're at the cheapest price to book levels ever. On the other hand, you've got some expensive shares like SA Bruce and Aspas, that's the most expensive they've ever been. So we're avoiding those and buying some of the resources at the moment. So you'd put your money in resources because you think that this is the bottom for them? Well, who knows? But, but what I know is if I hold cheap assets for five years, I should make money over the period. But if I hold an expensive asset now and keep it for five years, I've got a very good chance of losing money on that bet. So you rather stick to the first and, and buy some cheap assets and hold them for quite a period. 
So now in terms of uh, the sectors here in South Africa that an investor would want to invest in, what would you advise? Yeah, look, you need to have diversification as well. So cash is not bad at the moment because we know globally markets are expensive, the JSE is expensive, etc. But then you got some um, very expensive industrials that you avoid at the moment. There's some underlying industrials that are not so expensive. So you can pick some of those up. The banks don't look too expensive. And then, of course, the, whole, the resource sector doesn't look too expensive for us. But, yeah, for us, from an asset allocation point of view, it's very difficult because, as a whole, the index equity is expensive. Property is expensive. Cash is not yielding enough. Uh, the best one out there at the moment from an asset allocation point of view is probably bonds. But we're in an upward cycle, an interest rate cycle, so that makes it a bit difficult as well. All right, then we're going to leave it there. Thanks very much, Hebrant. That pleasure. was uh, Hebrant Smith. He's from NEFG. It's back to after the break. Devon has more business news for you.